We are joined today uh, by Therese Alijio Martinez, who is a program coordinator at the Bayan Association of Indigenous Social and Economic Development in Honduras. She is also a delegate from the Baha'i International Community to the 51st session of the Commission for Social Development, the priority theme of which, uh, of course, is promoting the empowerment of people in achieving poverty eradication, social integration, and full employment and decent work for all. So thank you so much, Therese, for joining us today. It is a joy to be here. I'd like to start um, just by having you tell us a little bit about the work you do, um, what, uh, what the Bayan Association is involved in, and kind of what you see kind of uh, at the, the grassroots every day. Okay. Um, the Bayan Association is a non-governmental organization that is working in Honduras. Um, as you have stated, it is an organization that works with social and economic development programs or projects, various really, but at this time the main program that Bayan is really looking into is the SAT program. And SAT is an acronym, um, a Spanish acronym for the system, a tutorial system of learning. Um, in Spanish it's called Sistema de Aprendizaje Tutorial. It's a program that started in um, Colombia by the FundaEC um, Foundation. Um, we won't get too much into those details, but I'll just talk about what experience we're having in Honduras with the SAT program and how that is contributing to the development and empowerment of, of people. Um, we work mostly with young people between the age of 12 and 18, but it's really interesting that um, because the SAT program is based or focuses, uh, it's implemented in rural areas, there are so many people that haven't had an opportunity for uh, secondary education in those areas for various difficulties, economic constraints, um, mainly that, and um, the opportunity or access to education is usually in the urban areas that they can't really afford. So we also do have, in some cases, you know, older people or, or yeah, older than 18 that are in the program. They're mothers and fathers um, that participate in these programs. Uh, we have, I, I know of two interesting a situation where that is concerned in a village called uh, El Hasmin, where the mother was graduated a year after her son. Her son got into <laughs> the SAT program and she was really motivated, you know, uh -huh. by her own son um, having the opportunity in their village to study. And so she studied and she graduated. And um, after her graduation, you know, she was really, uh, a really motivated. Um, person she talked about her self-esteem and how she have changed her life you know through through the SAT program and and that she have felt like she had uh, developed her capacities she felt more confident speaking to others um, going to look for her job for a job filling out forms and all these kind of things mm -hmm. yeah so that's basically what the SAT program is doing um, carrying to the villages um, an opportunity um, for people in the local areas to develop their capacities and in so doing to be able to play an active role in the development of their own communities. Mm, that's fantastic. The, um, so the priority theme of this commission is empowerment, and there's been a lot of discussion over the past uh, two weeks about what empowerment is and, and how it functions. From, from the work that, that you're involved in, what would you see as being some of the key ingredients of empowerment? What, what do you or what does your program feel um, it takes to generate true empowerment in, a, in an individual or in a community? I think the essence is really um, having the belief um, in the power, in the capacity of the individual, 
uh, the capacity that institutions, local institutions um, have, you know, they have the potential to, um, to make changes in their own communities. Um, and also the community itself as, uh, as a body that they could work together. Um, and to give, to open that opportunity or open the space for them to access knowledge, um, to learn to work together, and, um, and being uh, what we could probably say like that link between the people of the village or in the communities in rural areas as we're seeing people do, who haven't had access to the development um, areas, knowing who to contact, how to talk to them, not having that confidence because they feel like they're like north and south, you know, with the people that are in power. So it's being a link um, and, and giving those opportunities for people to realize that they do have the power, that they do have the potential and they have the capacity and they, uh, they can really work on, uh, on deciding on their own path of development. Mm -hmm. And kind of a related question to that, um, over the course of this commission, um, we've heard a lot of, uh, a wide variety of views of kind of what the um, the outcome or the effect of empowerment is. And I'm curious what, in, in light of your, your work, what do you see as being the primary social effects of empowerment? Um, so what is, what is the vision that you're working toward? You know, what does an empowered individual or an empowered community look like? How are relationships different? How are the actions people take? Um, what, are, what do you... What's the overall vision that you're trying to build in a, in a community that you go and work with? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, in our work, we hope to see people that have confidence in their, in their own ability to make decisions uh, and to guide um, their own development. You know, um, we, we hope to have communities working together um, and members of communities learning to make the best of their resources for the benefit of the development of their communities. Um, we hope to have institutions, local institutions, who are prepared um, to take decisions that will um, benefit their people you know, that will benefit their communities. And the way that we're working on that is that SAT, it's focused more on the youth, you know, the students. Mm -hmm. But around that, so we see the SAT students more as the center of, of, of our efforts, but we also do recognize the importance of having the members of the communities, parents in particular, um, be an active member um, or a pillar. We, we refer to them as one of the pillars mm -hmm. of, of this process. Um, and so we have the SAT program is based or carried through um, with the use of a number of texts. Um, it is a program of six years, and um, in, in each year, there are a certain number of texts that the student needs to, um, to go through. But there is one thing that I find really interesting with SAT because it's a program where you study theory and you put theory into practice. And it involves not only the students, but it really strives to involve the knowledge and members of the community the elders that are there. It is focused on the um, life of the community in which it lives. You know, most of the people in the rural areas are farmers, and so SAT in its program in Honduras, working in the rural areas, um, focuses on agriculture and how um, we could get 
the knowledge of the people that are working there, the parents, you know, what their experiences are, and they share that with their stu with the students, um, being guided as well with the theory that um, and, and experience that comes from the text itself. So there, there is a merge between the local or traditional knowledge and um, modern knowledge, if we should say. And they work on projects together. So they study within uh, a certain number of like three months. And within that three months, they're studying how to plan. They decide, they consult as a group, the SAT group, and um, with consultation and advice from uh, members of the community who would be mostly parents um, okay, what would we like to plant this time? How do we do it? How do we prepare the, uh, the soil? The parents come in and they say, hey, this is how we've been doing it and this is the result that we've had. Mm -hmm. And the students, um, with the help of their tutors, are there to say, okay, this is what the text is saying and this is what we expect to get out of this. How can we merge? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that that too is really, um, a key to development, it's a key to the empowerment of people, um, having to recognize the importance and the value of local education or traditional education, bringing those two together mm -hmm. and bringing people to work together, students and their parents, um, the community and the institution, which is the school or the class or SAT group as such, mm -hmm. you know, um, kind of merging their efforts into development. Mm -hmm. With any um, large um, commission or consultation like this, there's, there's always um, a fair amount of emphasis put on kind of uh, the idea of diagnosis, trying to understand what are, the, what are the problems or what are the challenges. And I'm curious in the work you do, what 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 do you feel have been some of the the primary challenges you've had to face, or some of the biggest um, barriers that can uh, arise in a community that that sort of prohibit people from becoming empowered? Yeah, I think that um, for instance, the participation of the parents. Uh, we were talking about their sharing of their knowledge, and I mentioned that um, the aspect of they're sharing from an agricultural or technical um, base. I think that they, they find that um, interesting. Um, but it was also, it, it also posed like this, a sense of shock or, or um, feeling not really prepared or I, I don't really have that knowledge to be um, participating in a process of education because I don't know how to read, I don't mm -hmm. know how to write, I mm -hmm. haven't really, I don't know how to um, present my ideas. Um, that, and particularly in, in areas like, uh, that is being also touched in the SAT program, um, in the area of, of uh, health, you know, where, um, they look at what foods are available, what are the, the benefits of, of eating, um, what, what are the nutri nutritionous, nutritional values of certain foods. Uh, and, and the parents, when they are asked to come to talk on these issues, um, they, they, they feel a little bit like drawn back, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one challenge, but there is also the the challenge of between institutions, I think, because the the regular educational system um, haven't really been focusing on the involvement of the parents in the process of education. Uh, parents are generally seen as um, a resource for economic mm -hmm. means. You know, if there is a window to be fixed, if we need to um, build a new a new classroom, um, if we need fencing, these kind of things, we think of ah, the parents needs to be 
um, contacted, you know, they need to meet, they need to find ways of doing, uh, of meeting these needs, but have not really been involved in the actual process of the education, the learning, the, the whole um, building or creating of knowledge. They haven't really been a part of that. And, and so there, there, there is also in, in some ways like that kind of a challenge to help other, other institutions, um, a, people that, that have a different mindset, you know, to see that this is really possible mm -hmm. and that it is something that is really important. So there is like that kind of uh, uncertainty in some ways of how these things work and in some in some situations where there are also reserves from the part of uh, other institutions and the very people themselves you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so my f my final question uh you know just hearing you talk about this i think to those on the outside there's there's so much that's really fascinating and unique about the the sad approach i'm curious what what you would what would you single out as being the most distinctive about your approach or what would you what would you most want to share with others about how you go about trying to empower individuals and communities what would be your your biggest lesson that you would like to share with others who who want to um, work towards similar ends i i think that um i would say be patient <laughs> you know it's 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 a process um be very willing and open-minded to learn, to learning. Um, there are mistakes that are being made in the process, but I think that if one is really clear about what their intention is, um, we tend to learn from our processes. In, in the SAT program, there have been a lot of challenges, and there still is. It's, it's not really the, it, it's, it's not done, you know? Um, conditions changes and so one needs to make amendments or make changes along with the the process of growth um, what we are seeing now is that after working um, so hard you know uh, and I want to say why am I talking about patients when the SAT program started there were quite a few people that were were in a position of reserve not to be a part of the program because um, they felt that it wouldn't really be able to bring to them development or any r meaningful um, results, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and um, most of the people that when they think of education, they want an education to have a better paid job at some point. Um, so when you talk about what it is that SAT is really offering um, in the sense of development, we see that now um, more people are, are seeing SAT as, as a means of making a better community, of having a better life. Um, and even more importantly, I feel that they, the, the SAT students or graduates and those that are really involved in the process see themselves as agents of change. So it's kind of changing that mindset of, of having an education or working towards getting an education only for um, the main purpose of earning money or having a better paid job. They're seeing themselves as being educated to be an active agent of change within their own communities. You know, we have um, graduates from the, SAT, from the SAT program who are now tutors in the SAT program in their own communities, and they're looked up to by the members of their community. Um, and um, the whole working, the working together you know, that it is really um, promoting, it's really setting like a, re a really fertile ground for students to respect the knowledge of their parents, for parents to feel free and feel a part of this whole process of education and looking at it 
as the means for their own development, the creation of, of projects, of community projects, of learning together and working together. Yeah. Well, Teresa Ligio Martinez, thank you so much for the work you're doing and thank you for joining us today. It is a joy. I'm really happy that um, having the opportunity to share these little experiences and um, you know, it's it's really a learning process, and I, I continue to uh, maintain that kind of mindset that we could learn together, you know, and, and should take up the opportunity to continue do that for the best of our communities and our own our own development as individuals. Thank you very much for the opportunity.